today as a the question for us this morning is are we ready um, to go like if you knew this fun question we always talk about if you knew that God was coming back today uh, what would you do today would you do the same things that you have planned for today already we all have plans for today watching a lot of football is one of them <laughs> but would you watch a lot of football if you knew for sure God was coming back like say tonight 645 before the Patriots game <laughs> so that's how say uh, but he's coming back and you like knew it uh, what would you do so I'd stay in church all day. I'd tell you to keep preaching. I want to be in church when he comes. I want to look good. <laughs> good. People would do that. I think people would flock to churches and flock to their, their knees and be ready to take a shower and get ready and like, uh, start confessing all these sins and everything if they knew for sure that God's coming back today. But the, fact, the thing of it is, like, he could come back today. And as soon as I say those words, everyone goes, but he's not. But he could. And here's the problem, is that many of us have been duped into thinking that he's not. When he could. We don't know. Jesus said, I don't even know when I'm coming back. It's not given to me to know, but it doesn't mean I'm not coming back. I am coming back. And uh, Let's, uh, let me go to the second verse first before we go to here. I just want to, it's one verse I want to read to you. Hebrews 10, 25. It says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And so here's the question for us. Like, how, do we see the day approaching at the time we're living in? Do you see it approaching more today than you did five years ago? Absolutely. Yeah, Do we see conditions in the world deteriorating more than it was uh, 20 years ago? I remember hearing about the rapture when I was first saved, and that was going on how many years? I always get it wrong. 40-something now? 43. Yeah, we're old. 40-something, uh, we're old Christians. Not just old people, we're old Christians. 40-something years. Um, and thinking, wow, you know, that's awesome, the thought of it and all that, but it was something like I would have said like the kid, but I don't want to go today. I like the concept of going to heaven, but I don't want to go today. But as you see the day approaching, and it, it makes me wonder about myself and about others, is like, do we see or have we stopped seeing the day approaching because of different things going on? Um, so now let's go back to Second Peter. Some interesting verses here. Uh, chapter three, verse three. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts. Uh, in some of the original manuscripts of the Bible, this uh, it's worded a different way. Uh, and King James left it out because he assumed that scoffers meant the same thing, and it kind of does. But it really says, knowing this first, that they shall come in the last days in mockery scoffers. That's why they're coming. The, in the last days, there will be scoffers. We had a guy yesterday scoffing at us. We asked him about... Uh, do you want to, you know, can we talk to you about Christ? Uh, do, you, or do you know where you're going to go when you die? He goes, I'm going to hell. Uh, and he's got this smile on his face and I'm like, don't say that, you know, do you have a chance to go to heaven? He goes, I want to go to hell. And he's like, why? He goes, I believe in Satan and I worship him. He goes, and nothing you're going to say is going to change my mind. You know, and then, so, it's scoffing at God whether he actually believed it or not, or thought he was joking, whatever, but scoffing at God. And the, the wording is this, they come in mockery. That's their purpose of coming to us, to mock what we believe, to scoff at us, you know. Uh, and saying in verse uh, 4, where is the promise of his coming? <clears throat> this is the mockery 
of society today. This is a mockery that many Christians harbor in their hearts and maybe don't realize it. But like I was saying, being saved for 40 something years, when the first year I got saved, they said, Jesus is coming back soon. It's like, wow, I want to get married first. I wasn't even married when I got saved. Like, am I going to be able to get married? And I was convinced that like the rapture is going to happen soon. And then there were uh, these uh, so-called prophets running around saying, well, we figured out when Christ is coming back. You know, uh, the, Israel became a nation in 1948. Jesus said a generation won't pass until all these things are fulfilled. And a generation is 40 years, so it's 1988. He's coming back. And we're like, oh my God, we don't have much time, you know. Uh, then people would actually go into caves and get hoarding and stuff. And like, he's coming back. And he didn't come back. And people say, oh, I must have run. And then uh, everyone thought, why 2K? The year 2000, he's coming back because it's 2,000 years since he was born. And in every 2,000 years, something traumatic happens in the world. That was 2,000 years from the flood to Christ and then Christ to 2,000 years. And Y2K has got to be it because they don't even know what's going to happen to the clocks in, in the year 2000. And all that panic, panic. And what's going to happen to the stock market, the clocks, we don't know. And then the midnight came and like nothing happened. It's like, oh, I guess he's not coming back today. And then there's been all kinds of people. And, and the so-called prophets saying, I, we know he's coming back in October, or he's coming back when the Mayan calendar runs out, he's coming back. But, but Jesus said, nobody knows when I'm coming back. Not even me. But I am coming back. And look at the signs of the times. Look at the signs of the times if you want to see around the time that I'm coming back. But like Pastor Mark says all the time, we are closer today to it than we were yesterday. Right? Every day that passes by, we are closer to it than we were the day before. Or as we, they were talking about it happening soon in the 70s and 80s, we're much closer to it now because it hasn't happened yet. But we're heading towards it. And, and all prophecy has been fulfilled of the day's return. And what are we doing? What are we doing? Are we us like subtly allowing that spirit of mockery to come into us and say, but where's the promise of his coming? How do you know he's coming? Well, I don't see it happen. Forty years he hasn't come. You know, it's like, is, are you sure about that? Like it could be another 200 years or maybe it's a thousand, maybe everybody's wrong. Where is the promise of his coming? Uh, it's coming. Because he promised it. Where is it? It's in the scripture. When is it? I don't know. Could it be tonight at 6.15? Yes. Could it be next week at 10.45 in the morning? Yes. But think about it with me. If you knew that he was coming tonight or next Tuesday, would you change anything in your life? Like, remember the story of St. Augustine? Uh, St. Augustine was asked that question, like a guy came to him, he was out in his garden, hoe in his garden, he's like, if you knew the Lord was coming back today, what would you do? He goes, I'd finish hoe in my garden. And I'm like, wow, there's a guy who's ready. He wouldn't do anything else, he would finish hoe in his garden. He knew he was in the perfect plan and will of God, and he was going, if God comes back, he's going. But honestly, you and I, uh, need to consider that question sometimes because I think we get caught up in the complacency of the mockery of the spirits that come against us that say, where is the promise of his coming? Mm -hmm. They keep talking about it, the pastor keeps talking about it, I read it in books, but I don't see it. But we look at the world today and we say, maybe this is one of the issues. Maybe we look at the world today and we go, yeah, there's bad stuff, but it's not that bad. I think it's going to get a lot worse before he comes back. Because it says, does it say it's in the days of Noah? Uh, what was happening in the days of Noah that made the flood happen? They were given and taken in marriage. They were committing all kinds of immorality. I could go down the list of immorality that's happening in America today, and you would shudder at some of it. But guess what? It's worse in other parts of the world the immorality that's going on. That there is nothing left in man's imagination that he has not done already uh, to offend God. 
In fact, it is much worse today than it was in the days of Noah. And Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, it so shall it be the second coming of the, of the Son of God. And we're in those times. The problem is with us, is like we look back in the days of Noah and we hear some of the stories, <clears throat> and it shocks us up to a point, but it's not shocking if you compare it to the things that are being allowed in the world today that are acceptable practices that people say there's nothing wrong with it anymore. So it's not shocking because it's the norm. It's the norm. Uh, but that doesn't mean when you line it up against God and His holiness that it's not worse or the same as it was then. So what are we looking for? What, what is it that makes us believe or, or is lulling us to sleep to say, He's not coming back because it's not that bad. According to who? Relative righteousness? Well, I don't do those things, so we're not going to do the work. We're going when he comes back. When the rapture happens, we're out of here. When the tribulation is coming in. But what does it say here in Peter? Let's continue. Uh, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, would not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt away with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Uh, whether that's a supernatural act or an act of man, both can happen. Men already know how to do that, melt the earth with fervent heat. Look at what a nuclear weapon does. Okay, uh, maybe when the uh, author wrote this, it would seem like an impossible thing. But Sodom and Gomorrah was melted with fervent heat, fire and brimstone. Uh, you go look at that land today; it's still uninhabitable uh, from what happened and in, in when God destroyed that. But the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. What promise to come back? The Lord, he's not slack. It's not like, where is the promise of his coming? It's like, why hasn't he come back yet? Because the Lord is long-suffering. That's why. He's not willing that any should perish. Right? So he's looking for his children, you and I, as Pat said, Christians, who have the name of Christ in the name, uh, to be out there about the Father's business, sharing the love of God with people, telling people about it. He's not willing that any should perish. Don't get in this concept where people think God is a mean God and he can't wait to send people to hell. No, he's not willing that any should perish. And that is the only reason why he hasn't come back yet, or else he would have. It's all because of that. It's not because we're good. <clears throat> it's not because some men are doing good and some aren't. And he's waiting for everybody to do bad. It's none of that. It's that he's, he's long-suffering. He's waiting for everyone possible to receive Christ. He'll give you a chance after chance after chance to receive him. People yesterday rejected Christ when we talked to him. He will give them another chance if he doesn't come back tonight at 6.15. But if he does, they're gone because they had a chance yesterday. Right? And people are, are duped into, with this mockery of the Spirit that says to him, you have plenty of time. You know, let's not even, let, let's look at, let's put that aside for a second and look at, just look at death for a second. That, that, another favorite subject of everybody. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to talk about death. I don't want to think about it. Uh, it's way away from me. Um, you know, you don't know when you're going to die. We say that to people all the time. You could step out in the street and die, you know where you're going to go. It's like rolls off our lips, but it's possible. You know, uh, my niece died yesterday. She wasn't planning on it. I guarantee you she wasn't planning. She was only 44 years old or something like that. Wasn't in the plans for the day to die. You don't wake up in the morning and say, what are you going to do today? I'm going to plan to die today. And this is how it's going to happen. Uh, before or after lunch? Oh, I don't know yet. Depends if I'm hungry. We don't do that. And we all think that... Death is like a long way off from us because we all want to say, I want to live to a ripe old age. 
you know, and then die in my sleep and no, no nothing. Just I'm a, I go to sleep and I wake up in heaven. That's my plan. But is that God's plan? We don't know. Uh, we hear every day on the news of tragic deaths of people getting hit by cars or trains hitting somebody or this or that. And they, none of those people plan to die that day. Remember the motorcycle accident just two months ago? They're still talking about it on the news because of the tragedy of what happened. Seven motorcyclists uh, on a nice trip up in the mountains. You know, Buddy was just there yesterday driving his bike in the mountains. He wasn't planning on dying yesterday. Thank God he didn't. But it happened to those seven guys. They were on a very similar trip. But who knew a guy was going to come with, you know, that we shouldn't have been on the road and hit all of them. It happens. And we like say, but it's not going to happen to me. Like we, like, we know that. We don't know that. And I'm not saying this to scare anybody today, to go home and come and say, oh, I might die today. But if you did, I, if you did, number one, are you good with it? Like, you know where you're going. Yes, I know I'm going to heaven. Like, if I, uh, I always tell people when uh, I'm talking to them, I said, I know if I step on the street and a car hits me, and I know I'm going to be in heaven. I know that. Do I want it to happen? No. But if it happens, I know I'm going to be there. But like death, we don't like to think about it. And maybe like that is one of the reasons why we don't like to think about the Lord coming back. Or could he come back? Or we don't believe he could come back today at 6... None of us in this room believe he's coming back at 6.15 today. And I say, why not? Why not? What's stopping him? The only thing that's stopping him, as we just heard, is his long suffering. But when, when does that end? I don't know. Maybe he's had it today at 6.15. He says, that's it. Trump sounds, they're gone. Let's start the tribulation. Well, none of us know. And I think what we need to do is have an awareness about us of that fact that it could happen at any moment. And so if we say it could happen at any moment, uh, would I change anything if I knew it was happening? Not say today or say we knew two weeks from now. Say like we just announced, Pastor Chevelli's coming on November 22nd. Say, I have an announcement today. Jesus is coming back on November 22nd. If you want to go, uh, meet at the parking lot at 6 o'clock. <laughs> You know, and we'll have a meeting beforehand to practice. Right? And it's like, can we have a show of hands who wants to go when Jesus is coming? And like half the people raise their hands. Why? Because nobody believes he's coming. I, this is what we do. Uh, but the reality is, is that he could. And so if he could, could I be like St. Augustine and say, well, what are you going to do today? Well, I was going to finish raking my yard because the leaves are there, you know. Uh, would you? Would I do that, or would I say, well, I think I'll go soul winning. I think I'll go to prayer time. I think we'll have a special prayer meeting, so we'll all be ready when he comes. Or to say, what can I do that's going to make it any better? I've already received Christ as my Lord and Savior. I already know He's coming back. I'm looking for it. I don't want to be one who's slack, who thinks the Lord is slack, as men count slackness. Men count slackness today like if you take longer than eight seconds in the ATM line, you're, you're wasting time. Or if you go through the drive through at McDonald's and it takes more than a minute, you're tapping on the brake. No, what's taking so long? We're, we're a we want everything now society. And so when we hear that God's coming back, say when? So we don't know. Oh, well, forget it. Forget what? The fact that he's coming back, well, we don't know when. It could be thousands of years, or it could be now. No, it could be any moment. If it could be a thousand years from now, it could be four hours from now. That's what I'm saying. There's no promise in the Bible that says, I'll come back when this happens. Everything has happened. Mm. Everything has happened in prophecy. So we could come back at any moment. And you can't say, well, the world isn't that bad. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Morality is bad or not worse than it was in Noah's day. All right, men's hearts are falling away. There's a falling away from the church that is happening, not uh, just locally, but nationally. Men are falling away. And that's a sign of the last times. Weather, earthquakes, all of it that we've been taught all these years, it's all still happening, only they magnified. There's been more earthquakes and devastating fires this year than there was last year than there was in the last 10 years. And every year it increases more. And the Earth's temperature is getting warmer and warmer. And that's going to affect the Earth and uh, 
dramatic ways. It's going to happen and all points to Jesus Christ coming back. <clears throat> Countries are already talking about the one world order. They've been talking about it in the 70s like a whispering thing. You know, we're playing it. But now it's open talk about it. Mm -hmm. The Vatican is talking about it. Uh, Europe is trying to talk about an economy that will be a, a cashless society. Sweden now has a program where everybody can get implanted with a chip. And it, you don't need your, to lose your wallet anymore, get your car keys or do anything. You just show your hand and it's all your car will start, your doors will unlock, and you, you can buy stuff. And they love it in Sweden. The U.S. doesn't want to do it because of identity theft, but Sweden is saying we have no problem with it, we're working on it, but the people love it because they don't have to worry about all these things anymore. They just swipe their hand. The mark of the beast. It's coming. And the world is being prepped for it now so that, thank God, we won't be here when that, the actual mark comes. We say you, there will be a law that says you cannot buy or sell unless you have this mark. And the ones who won't take it will be Christians during the tribulation period, but we'll be gone already, thank God. Hallelujah. We don't have to worry about that. So today, like right now, if you're, you know you're a Christian, you're going to heaven, someone says, oh, we got this chip, we're going to do it, I'm not getting it, or I'm going to hell. No, that's not true. Uh, you won't be here when that day happens of the mark of the beast. It, will not, it happens at the midpoint of the tribulation. We are long gone, like three and a half years worth in earth time. Who knows how long in eternity, but we're not here. But the people will face that choice, but the earth is pushing towards it. The technology is there, they're just defining it. 20, 30 years ago, it was just a thought. It was a concept that said, it's possible, we're working on it. Now it's doable. Now it's at the point where we can do this. All we've got to do is get the people to agree to it. And in 10 years, everybody will agree to it. Once they figure out that no one's identity can be stolen, Everybody will agree to it. You know, uh, somebody said yesterday, <clears throat> I was getting a coffee or something, and someone said, isn't it great that we don't have to use cash anymore? You know, so it's so convenient. Everybody just swipes, swipe, 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 swipe. I do it. Swipe, 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 swipe. Because I know it's not the mark of the beast, but it's heading towards it. The technology is there. And so we are told in the Bible, these days are coming upon us. And if you don't believe, uh, if you like had this thought, like, where is the promise of his coming? Maybe we're just not seeing it. It's coming. And it can come at any time now. And again, I don't say it to scare any of us. We're all like the little kid yesterday. I want to go, but I don't want to go today. <laughs> but if, I'm, if it does happen today, I'm ready to go. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm saved. I've already done. You know, but what can we do as believers? Uh, if you can, turn to uh, Mark. You know, like what can we do as believers to be ready? To be ready. Uh, to know that I'm ready. You Not know, live in fear and hide in a cave and hoard food and say, oh, he's got... Because you know, when he comes back, you're not going to need food or water. It's like, boom, you're gone, twinkle of the eye, see ya. You don't have to worry about even what you're wearing, because you're not bringing clothes into heaven either. So don't hoard all these clothes for right winter in case he comes back. You know that people like they do that. God's coming back, we've got to store everything in the cave, and there's going to be all this. No, there's going to be a rapture, and his believers are taken out in the twinkle of an eye. You could be in the middle of a shower, and boom, you're gone. And nobody's going to care that you don't have any clothes on. So... It's not, you know, nothing like that's going to happen. You know, glorified bodies caught up in the air with the Lord forever. Awesome to think about. Uh, and then we say this like, I, but when he does come back, I wouldn't want to be in the bar having a beer with my buddies. I'd rather be in church listening to a message, you know. Yeah, of course. But it's a, but it goes beyond that into this belief like, uh, if I really believe that the trumpet could sound tonight at 6.15. Would I go to a bar today? No, I wouldn't. Or oh, like <coughs> the guy on death row says, what would, you're gonna die at six o'clock tonight and here's your last meal, what do you want? They get to have whatever they want. You know, whoop de do. it's their last meal. Uh, physical food. I don't know if it was me, I don't think I could eat at that moment of my life. <laughs> but, uh, People do. They order all kinds of strange things. 
But what would you do? What would you do? Like if you knew, because it it's possible it happened tonight, and yet, like we know, it's possible it could happen tonight. Like, and if you're honest with yourself, like I am, you just don't believe it. You just don't believe it. But if you did believe it, and it was, you definitely were convinced that it's possible, and we should be at this point in the message, uh, what would you do? Would you do anything differently today? Would you be calling your relatives and apologizing, trying to reconcile? Would you be on your knees confessing all your sins that God already paid for, uh, but maybe you haven't acknowledged? Would you be trying to get rid of anger and fear and uh, getting yourself ready? Would you be in the bathroom throwing up because you're sick over what's about to happen? Maybe that's possible. All of these things could happen. But what can we do we, if we've received Christ, we've already done it. We're secure forever. But it doesn't mean that we can just live like hell. Uh, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, uh, but do it all the more as you see the day approach. Do it all the more as you see. Why is that in there? And you know how many Christians hate that verse? How many times people or pastors have preached that verse and everyone shudders because they haven't been in church or this or that, and it's not even about that. It's not even about that. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves. You could just put that alone and say, that's a good principle. Like we should, like Pat said, why do we go need to go to church? We need each other. We need to be encouraged. We need to hear his word. We need to cast off cares. We need to be... Uh, uh, listen to the promises of God, to be rehearsing who we are in Christ, to understand what's going on in the world, to hear a message such as this that says, I'll be ready. If we're not, let's get ready. Let's be aware. Let's be, like these verses say in Mark, uh, let's read them, uh, if I can. Verse 31, Mark 13. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man uh, his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh at evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, or at 6.15, or next Thursday at 10 o'clock, or Saturday before the Patriots game. You know not when he's going to come, you know. Uh, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, all of us, not just saying it to them back then, I say unto all, watch. What can we do? Watch. Watch. Be aware of what's going on in the world of the signs. Not watching. I'm looking for the return of the Lord. Do I know when it's going to happen? No, I don't. Do I stop living because he might come back tonight? No. But I live for him. I live uh, to uh, absorb his word and share his word. To hear his word and then put it out of my mouth and tell people about him. He's coming. There's a, there's, there's a day. This isn't going to go on forever, people. And this is what the devil has do people. And they think, where is the promise of his coming? Mocking spirit. Yeah, yeah, you've been saying this for 40 years. You've been saying this for 10 years. I've been hearing it my whole life. He's coming. He's coming. Where is it? They said that at Noah's day, too. Noah said, it's going to rain a lot. <laughs> Noah, it's never rained before. What are you talking about? We don't even know what rain is. Uh, the Lord's coming, and he's going to flood the earth. Uh, repent. And they called him crazy. And they went on drinking and getting married and giving in marriage and carrying on. And the, really what was going on in Noah's day was life. Without any concept that God was coming back. And this is exactly what people are going on today. In morality, yes. Uh, the things men are doing to men uh, in the world uh, is horrible. And it's just as bad as Noah's day. But life is going on today. And the promise of his coming is not even considered by many, including Christianity. <coughs> there are many 
believers in Christianity that won't, don't even want to think about him coming back. And uh, Jesus is saying, I'm telling you to watch. I left, and I left people in charge to warn you and to encourage you uh, that I'm coming back. So don't fall asleep on it. Uh, why? If I fall asleep, is he going to not take me when he comes back? That's not what it's saying. But you want to be ready. You want to be ready. Like, what if, if somebody, like, really knew, like, I hope it's me, uh, if somebody knew that he's coming back tonight, and they tell another believer, and they say, I don't believe you, uh, you're sleeping, right? Because you're not looking at the signs of the times. You've fallen asleep as to the things of God that are going on. If any one of us takes a look around the world, we all say, how? This is like God. What do you, what, you got to come back soon. But think of it in those terms. Are we watching for that? Are we looking for it? Uh, many people were looking for the prophecies and the signs, though they've happened. They've happened. The next thing that's going to happen is we're going to hear the sound of the trump. And in less than a second, we're all going to be gone. And this is a concept that when you say it to people, uh, you wonder at it like you're looking at a movie, uh, and this unbelievable thing that happens in a movie, and you go, wow, that was amazing. But the belief is not there, sadly. You know, I'm talking to myself, too. Uh, we have to get to this place where we realize, I have been being mocked my whole life concerning this issue. I've been having this spirit of mockery uh, coming at me saying, where's the promise of, do you really believe he's coming? I don't think he's coming back. I, I've heard it so long, I'm, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. If he comes back, he comes back, whatever. And we're like falling asleep. Uh, concerning a major portion of doctrine in Scripture that God tells us to be watchful for. Watch and what can I do? Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. I'm already saved. I don't have to do anything in that department, but what if I know somebody that isn't saved and I know he's coming back? Well, I want them to get saved, so of course I'm going to talk to them about it. But we don't talk to them about it because why? We don't believe he's coming back. If you believed he was coming back tonight at 6.15 and there was someone in your family that wasn't saved, I guarantee you, you would be talking to him today. Mm -hmm. You would be calling him on the phone and say, listen, he's coming back, you've got to receive him. It's not too late, 11th hour salvation, turn your heart to God, please do it before he comes back. Uh, but we don't, because in our hearts, we don't believe he's really coming back today at 6.15. And I've said that so much today that it's possible. <laughs> no, no man knows the hour. Okay. So, but, you know, I keep saying it because I want to hammer home the point that we don't know, but it could. Mm -hmm. We don't know, but it could. So, if, 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 it, if it could, what would we do differently? And if we would do something differently, why? Why would we do something differently? Why aren't we doing it already? Is the, the convicting question, isn't it? Convicted me when I said it in my notes. I want, do I really want to say that from the pulpit? What, if I'm not doing what I know I would be doing if I knew he was coming back, why am I not doing it? I must ask myself that question. Why am I not telling people that I want to go to heaven because I don't believe he's coming back in this plenty of time? Time becomes our worst enemy as believers. Time. Have people say, you got all the time in the world. Uh, you got plenty of time. Do it tomorrow. Put it off. You know, I, I you know, had people even saying to me, I'll follow God later, but I've got things I want to do in my life first. Wow. You can't follow God and do those things? No, I don't think God would want to be doing those things. But I, I have plenty of time, and later on, when I've done everything I want to do, I will follow God. God does not take second place, by the way. Amen. He does not. People can be fooled into that and think you've got all kinds of time. Remember the story of the man who was rich? He says, what should I do with all my money? I know what I'll do. I'll tear down my bonds and I'll build bigger ones. I'm creating my own empire. And I will put all my goods in my bonds and I'll say to my soul, 
you have done well, eat, drink, and be merry. And before he could even plan that out, uh, Jesus said, you fool, tonight your soul is required of you. So, it could be that God isn't coming back tonight at 6.15, but it could be that your last day on earth is today. Ooh, Pastor, what are you doing? That's... <laughs> what the hell? No. It's scaring me. <laughs> like, uh, my plan, for, big plan for today is to get, buy some food and watch the Patriots. You know what I mean? It's like, for many men, or women, if you're Patriots fans, it's like, that's the biggest event of the weekend. Well, isn't going to church a big event? Nah, you know. But if you knew he was coming back, wouldn't you go to church tonight instead of the Patriots game? I think, I think maybe. Or have a prayer meeting. Or on the phone trying to win someone to the Lord. And this is the point, is that this is what watching is. Right? This is what being ready is. Watching and praying. Because it could happen at any moment. And believing that as Christians. Do I know when? No, I don't. But I don't want to be lulled into thinking that it's way far away. Because it's not... I mean, I, used, I, I thought about it more when I was a younger Christian, and I'm 40 years into it, and it's like, you can get lulled into thinking, well, it hasn't happened in 40 years, it's probably not going to happen in my lifetime, but I don't have much time left, if I, even if I'm just living to a ripe old age, right? Like, I was, somebody mentioned 1950, I mean, 2052 the other day, I said, I'll be 100, almost, if I'm here. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm going to be here then. Think about that. It's 2019. In 2056, I will be 100 years old. Oh, I could be here, but chances are not. So, like, there's 10 minutes left on my life clock, you know? Uh, that's the situation. Not, and again, I'm not trying to scare you or anything. It's just like facts today, just facts. Just the facts, man. Uh, where was I going with that? It's, but that, that could, so yeah, if, if you're not sure about the Lord coming back, you can be sure that everybody dies. We already know that fact, don't we? But we all think this, I got plenty of time, plenty of time. We don't even know how much time we have. We do not. And by the way, if you do live to a ripe old age, like the Bible says in Psalm 91, 90, 90, uh, what is the age of man back then? It was three score and ten years. If you lived to be 70 back then, you were considered like an old guy. Like, that's old. Nobody lives to be 70 anymore. Everybody was dying of diseases and wars and all that stuff. But he said, but even if that is your age, an old, old person, your life is like a tale that was told, right? Uh, and comparing to eternity, your life, 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, it's like a tale that was told, or as we read in the scriptures in the New Testament, it's like a vapor. It's here today and gone tomorrow. We don't have all the time in the world. If, if people aren't saved, they need to get saved. If you're not saved today in this room or watching on video, you need to get saved. That's like your security. Like even if it comes back or you die, you're going to heaven. That's the only way to get to heaven. That's what our message is to people. Encourage people. Know the Lord. Receive the Lord. He died for your sins. Accept Him. Go have eternal life and eternity in heaven forever rather than eternal damnation in hell. Receive the Lord. It's free. It costs nothing. You're not going today. It's, but unless he comes back, but, but uh, you want to be sure. Yes, we want to be sure. Watch and pray that the Lord of the harvest, when he comes, doesn't find us sleeping. Uh, I'll close with this. Um, the story of the, the ten virgins, wasn't it? Ten virgins, yeah. Uh, they, they were waiting for their Lord to come to take them away to bliss and everything. Uh, five of them had oil in their lamps. Five of them forgot to put it in. They were lulled to sleep by the promise of his coming, but he, they didn't know when he was coming. And uh, he came. And the ones that had oil in their lamps were ready to go, and the ones that didn't were chasing around trying to find oil, and nobody would give it to them. Uh, 
stuff. We don't want to be people in that situation. If you don't have the oil of the Holy Spirit lighting your heart, you need to have it. And that's what we call getting saved, receiving Him. The Holy Spirit in the Bible is called the oil of the Lord. And He comes in. You want to have the oil in your lamp. So you'll be ready when the Lord comes back. Encourage people and your families uh, and friends uh, to receive the Lord. It puts like a, uh, like a kind of a, a burden on us, but we should have a burden as believers. We should have a burden for souls. We should have a burden for the times we're living in. We should be able to look at people and not see their sins, but see their need for Jesus Christ because the time is short because we are a day closer than we were yesterday and tomorrow will be a day closer than we were today. And tomorrow, this message will be more relevant than it was today because it's tomorrow. And we're still here, but it's one more day. And don't think you have, like, thousands of days to do this with. We do not. The clock's ticking. And like the Bible says, the time is now to receive the Lord. The time is now to cast off the, the sins of the flesh and follow God. The time is now to discover who you are in Christ. Right? Uh, like that song of Barbara sings all the time. Now is the time, right? And so we have that message to give. We have, that's really, I know this seemed like a down a message. But it's really an encouragement for us to realize, hey, my eternity is secure. I know where I'm going and I'm going to be ready. And I want to be like Augustine and say, if he comes today, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to still go shopping and get food for my family in case they're left behind. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, they're all saved. They're all saved. I'm sorry. Let's pray. Amen? Let's pray. <laughs> okay, listen. Listen, you bow your heads and close your eyes. I'm here today, and I don't take this for granted. I like, could say, oh, everybody in this room is saved because they come to church. No. No, like, people can go to church for years and not be saved. Isn't that amazing to think about? You can go to church every week as a part of your religious responsibility, and it's what your family taught you to do, but you never received Christ as your Lord and Savior. So therefore, you have a head knowledge about God that makes you afraid, but you don't have a relationship with Him in your heart that sets you free, uh, to, to free to worship God and understand a message like this, that you don't have to be afraid of it. Uh, you're good with God. Uh, if you're here today, watch, if you're watching, if you're in this room, you never really received Christ as your Savior and you would like to. You want to go to heaven when you die, not necessarily today, but you want to. Say this prayer in your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I receive you into my heart. I, I want to go to heaven when I die. Thank you for dying for my sins. And it's really that simple to say. Just mean it in your heart with God. You can't go to heaven on your own. You can't do it on your own. None of us can. Receive the gift of salvation and know for sure. Uh, if you're here saying that prayer for the first time in your life, you said it before, you'd never have to say it again, but if you're saying it for the first time, put up your hand, we'll pray for you, give you a Bible. Uh, if you're watching, you're saying it, if you want to send us a line uh, in the mail, we'll send you out a Bible and some information. We're Crossroad Christian Church, 15 Lynn Street, Peabody, Mass. Father, help us to be watchful and prayerful. And to be looking, Lord, not hiding, not cowering, but looking, living our lives with a viewpoint that you're coming back at any moment, Lord. And we want to be prepared. Lord, we have oil in our lamps, Lord. We want to keep them lit for you. And uh, help us to do that, Lord. And we ask all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.